Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 15 of our tile-based top-down shooter. In this video we're going to be talking about adding some simple visual effects to add some appeal, some visual flair to our game. And we're also going to really quickly talk about a pesky bug that has snuck into our code and that we hadn't noticed yet. So before we start, we have a bug to fix. So a viewer named Matthew Brown discovered this bug, and when it comes up, switch over to our map here, he discovered it when he was trying to place walls around the edge of the map. And here's what happens, right? So I've added this wall here, right? And so with it right here, if we go over and uh, run the game, you'll see there's no problem. Right, there's the player spawning where we wanted him to spawn. But if I go back over to the map and I make this wall a little bit longer, let's do it to about right there. Watch what happens when we run it. My player is not in the same place. And in fact, when it really goes wrong is if you try and make this wall really long. Watch what happens now. Oops, let me save it here. Watch what happens now. The player is gone. In fact, so is the zombie that was supposed to spawn here. So what happened? Well, if I start moving, you'll see I was over here off the screen. And so I'm spawning off the side. And if there were walls on this side as well, I'd be outside of them. So there'd be no way to get back onto the screen. So something is causing our player's position to be changed when it sees these walls. So I recommend that before you uh, continue and hear what the answer is, uh, pause the video, try this on your game, see if you have the problem. Um, you probably will if you've been following along with the code we've been writing. Um, but give a shot at trying to see if you can figure out what is causing it. And then, uh, and then come back and unpause the video and see if, uh, if you found the same solution that I did. And so it had me stumped for a couple minutes and then I realized um, what's happening is in our sprites, so let's go look at the player. And this is true, it's happening with the player and the zombies, but look at the player. In the init, we get the X, Y, and we set the position to that, right? And then the update, we figure out where we're supposed to be, and we set our rectangle to that location. But in the first frame, we're using the settings that come from the init function. And in the init function, we create the rectangle, but we never set any values for it, which means the X and Y of the self.rect are being set to 0, 0. So on the first frame, before it has updated, the first thing it does is check for collisions, right? It checks for colliding with walls. And if we're at 0, 0, or our rectangle is at 0, 0, then when we collide with a wall, we're going to be moved to the edge of a wall. And that is what is happening, is we're, we're being shifted to the edge of the wall. So to fix that, all we need to do is just make sure that in the init of our sprite, when we create the rectangle, we just set the self.rect.center to that xy position. And we need to do that on the mob as well. So this is one of those pesky little bugs that would have been obvious if we had done this earlier, but it just happened that since we weren't creating a map with any stuff on the edges, it didn't it didn't uh, come into play. So now when I run it, no problem, I spawn right there. The wall is there, I can't go through it, but we don't get any strange behavior on spawn. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about visual effects. Now, 
it's still a little early in this game uh, to talk too much about that, but I thought it'd be fun just to uh, to do a little bit, um, add a little bit of visual appeal uh, to what we have so far. And to do that, I went to um, back to our friend Kenny and a art pack that he did of particles and things. And I've grabbed a couple of images here called white puff uh, with numbers on them, right? And all they are are just some cloud puffs. And we're going to use those to create a muzzle flash whenever we shoot a bullet from our gun. So I went ahead and went over here on our settings and I made a list of those files. Just a list of them um, in a list called muzzle flashes so that I can load them over in our load data code. So we're just going to make a list of um, gun flashes to hold these images once we load them. So we're just going to go through that muzzle flashes list and we're going to append it, append each of them. Image.load, join from our image folder, the image name. Uh, and then what I remember to do, convert alpha. Okay, so now we'll have all of those loaded. And to make them appear, we're going to create another sprite. And now eventually this might become more of a generic sprite for different kind of effects we want to have and there's a lot more advanced ways to do effects but again we're trying to keep it relatively simple for now Oops. so we're going to just add a, a muzzle flash class and this is going to start out as a generic sprite right we're just going to pass it a position for where we want it to spawn And then we just need to um, randomize a couple of things. We want to randomize which image we use. Right? We also want to randomize the size so that we can sometimes get bigger or smaller flashes. Um, now up here I'm going to add rand int because I also want to just pick random integers for this case. So we're just going to do a random integer between 20 and 50. And then our, we're going to set our image to a scaled image of that. So we transform scale. We're going to make a choice from game dot gun flashes. And we're going to rescale it to that size that we just chose. Uh, we do get rect for the image and we set our position to wherever we said and we set our rect center to wherever we said. And then we just want to make sure that we can despawn this thing. It's not going to live very long, right? So the spawn time of this is going to be get ticks. And then we just need to in our death update, just see if it's been long enough to despawn it. So what we want to do is say if get ticks minus spawn time is greater than some number of milliseconds we want it to last. So we'll go over here to our settings and we're also going to add flash duration of say 40 milliseconds right this is going to be pretty quick we just want it to be a flash so if it's been longer than that then self.kill okay and that's our muzzle flash so now we just need to spawn one of these whenever we fire a bullet 
and we do that in class player when we shoot. So right here where is where we spawn a bullet and we're just going to also spawn a muzzle flash. And the position is going to be this position that we just calculated of where the bullet, because we calculated the where the end of the barrel is that the bullet's going to spawn. We also want to just spawn the muzzle flash there. Now if we try this out, right, you see that flash? But we have a problem. Sometimes that flash is underneath the gun and sometimes it's on top. And sometimes it's underneath the bullet and sometimes it's on top of it. So we need to start introducing the idea of layers. So if we can tell our draw code to always draw things in the correct order, we can make sure that the muzzle flashes are always on top, um, the bullets are never underneath uh, the player, that kind of thing. Um, and the place we're going to do that is in the all sprites group. Right now, the all sprites group is just a regular Pygame um, sprite group. But there's another kind of sprite group you can use uh, called layered uh, updates. It works just the same as a regular sprite group as far as updating, drawing, all that kind of thing. But it has an additional property that if you set a layer property on sprite, it'll draw them in the order that you set the layers. So for example, over here in the settings, I'm, I've added some, some layers, right? So I want to make sure that the walls are always at the lowest layer, so they have the lowest number, right? The effects are set at level layer 4, so they're going to always be drawn on top of anything that has a lower layer value than 4. It'll always draw those effects last. So that way, when we add other effects like dust or fog or smoke or anything else like that, we can make sure that it's drawn where we want it to be drawn. So all we need to do is assign each of these layers to our sprites. And the easiest way to do that is in the sprite definition. So in the sprite definition, now you can set this in a lot of different ways, but the easiest way I think is to just add in the player in it a self dot underscore layer, it's sort of like a default layer settings, right? So we know we want the player to be on the player layer. So if you do this here before you call the Pygame sprite in it, it'll see this property and set the layer to that layer. And so on the mob, we just want to say mob layer. Uh, the bullet we're going to set to bullet layer, and it is underscore layer. That's a you can look into the Pygame. Uh, documentation if you want to see why, but they just decided to name it that way to indicate it's a special special variable um, that we're setting at, a, at, at initialization time. Uh, wall layer. Now, technically this wall layer isn't being used right now because we're using the um, tiled map to do all of our graphics. We're not actually drawing those wall objects, but I went ahead and filled it in. Um, some of you may still be using that. If you ever want to go back to it, it'll be ready to go. Um, and we want to put this at the effects layer. OK. So just check back. Make sure we set it right on each of these, underscore layer, underscore layer. OK. So now if we go over here and we run this, you're going to see that whenever you shoot those, bullet those muzzle flashers are always appearing on top of the gun. Looks very nice. Just gives a little bit of visual flair. Now moving forward, you might think of other places we could use effects like this. 
um, when a bullet hits a mob or when a mob hits the player, when a bullet hits a wall, um, any of those kind of things, you can have a little shockwave effects, puffs of dust, um, even sprays of blood if you were thinking of making things a little more gory. Although I think for this video series, we're going to stick to a PG rating. So that'll do it for this video. We now have a layered drawing function and we can uh, start adding more graphical effects and more visual appeal. Uh, we have some more work to do on our zombies and their movement style, although they're way better than they used to be. Um, and we can actually start talking about some more about gameplay as opposed to basic code functions. Um, if you have some thoughts or suggestions along those lines, uh, please post them in the comments below. And I will see you all in the next video. As always, please hit the like button below and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can see the next video as soon as it comes out. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Welcome back to Game Development with Pi Game. This is part 15 of the tile-based top-down shooter project. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to add some simple visual effects to add a little flair, a little appeal uh, to our game's graphics. Welcome back to Game Development with Pi Game. This is part 15 of the tile-based top-down shooter project. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to add some simple visual effects to add a little flair, a little appeal uh, to our game's graphics.